Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on peak hold averaging. Now, just as a quick refresher, with normal linear averaging, we the analyzer will capture four averages, which may be, or four spectra, which may be overlapped, they may not be. Have a look at the other quick presentations. And then for every frequency or bin in the spectrum, it will calculate the average. It'll add all four values up and divide them by four. With RMS averaging, it adds the squared values, averages them and square roots it. But anyway, we end up with an averaged value. So in, in this instance you can see just in the background here the average value was quite low compared to the peak value because there must have been other lower amplitude values as well. So let's see how peak hold averaging works. The, the process is the same. The analyzer will still take a series of chunks of waveform which may be overlapped per the overlap averaging process uh, and then it will go through line by line or bin by bin and look at every frequency but just pick out the maximum value. In this case with four averages it's going to look for, at every frequency and say which is my maximum? Keep it. Which is my maximum? So if we look at what it does you notice that it just sits right on top. It will always keep the maximum value of frequency that it experienced during the measurement at every single line or bin in the spectrum. Peak hold average function is a great tool to use in a lot of situations. Sometimes analyzers will have custom functions for impact testing and for run up and run down testing and for bump testing and, and, and different types of tests. Peak hold averaging is just a simple way to achieve pretty good results with, with all of those test types. So if you don't have those functions you know, it's no excuse not to do them because peak hold averaging gives you a way to sort of get around the limitations. It's always going to keep whatever the worst vibration is. So, for example, if we put our sensor on a machine while it's running even and then hit it, then at certain frequencies the vibration will rise up because uh, those frequencies will have resonated. Okay, certain frequencies resonate they lift up the peak hold average will keep that maximum value. As the machine changes in speed and all the peaks in the spectrum move with peak hold averaging turned on it will keep the maximum value of frequency it, it ever sees. You will be able to see how the amplitude changes and there are other ways where we can use peak hold averaging. So let's just see that in real life. Here's our time waveform, all the vibration from the machine um, and what I'm going to do is just look at the vibration in this peak hold average way. Um, so here I've got my spectrum. Now let's have a look at one of the samples of vibration where there was a lot of beating going on. So if we watch this peak here we can see that uh, if we play the vibration watch it rise up and down rising up and down. If we turn on normal linear or RMS averaging and do that again, you see that if, if I zoom in, it's the vibration has varied up and down, up and down, but the average is somewhere in the middle. If I turn on peak hold averaging, it remembers the highest vibration it saw at any of the frequencies. Wherever it is, it kept the worst uh, or the highest amplitude of vibration, whatever it happens to be. If, for example, there's a little bit of speed variation, now I'll just turn that, reset it, and go to this one. In this instance, we've got this peak. I mean, all the vibrations changing in frequency slightly, but being a higher frequency, we can see it more clearly. So, Again, if I were to um, play the vibration, if I just turn the averages off for a second and do that, you can see that peak, you can see the peak is moving in frequency. Well, when I turn on peak hold averaging, I can see exactly where it's moved. I can see it changing. Now, this isn't a fantastic example, but you know, if it was a run up or run down test or something like that, 
you would you could use this and see exactly how the how the amplitudes changed as the frequency or as the speed of the machine changed. So there's lots of ways to use it. It's easy to, to use. Just remember that even though you might use as few as four averages or hopefully more like six or ten averages when you're doing your normal measurements, with peak hold averaging you normally have a lot more because you're just listening to the machine for a while while it's running up and down, while you're bumping it or whatever it's doing. Um, so just set it to a nice high value and uh, it'll capture the, the highest amplitude vibration that the machine experienced during that test. Anyway, that was a quick presentation on peak hold averaging. I hope you found it useful.